Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of IBNW and today we're going to be starting a brand new series called What's the Point? And the main point of this series, no pun intended, is to really just make some short videos about some scripture and learn how we can draw some of the main topics, the main points, if you will, out of that scripture in order to apply it to our everyday life. Now, I do want to caution you for this very first episode, and I know you haven't seen her yet. Uh, I got my little doggy Bella right here laying on my lap, if, if you saw that. Uh, reason why is because my wife is at Bible study. This dog gets some crazy separation anxiety. And if you don't literally pick her up and put her on your lap, she's going to just cry, 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 whine, whine, whine. So if you hear any little bit of that, just know it's her. And I hope it doesn't annoy you at all throughout the video. So for the very first episode of this series, we're going to be going over Colossians chapter two. Now to understand this, we need to first place it in its proper context. So the book of Colossians was written by the Apostle Paul and it was written to a church in the town of of Colossae, hence the name Colossians. If you didn't know, Colossae was a mainly Gentile city, but it did have a sizable Jewish minority population there. This is where we really get into why this letter was written. Now, the founder of this church, as far as we know, was actually not the Apostle Paul, but a man named Epaphras. And Epaphras was so concerned about the false teachings that were starting to infiltrate the church from the surrounding areas. You had pagan mysticism on one side from the Gentile audience, and then you had Jewish legalism on the other side from the Jewish audience, and they were starting to sweep their way inside the church. And this really concerned Epaphras. So he made the long journey from Turkey all the way over to Rome where the Apostle Paul was imprisoned. And Paul wrote the book of Colossians while he was in prison to address these issues and some other things inside this book. Now the chapter that we're going over in chapter 2 mainly deals with false teaching and how we need to stand firm in Jesus Christ and pay no heed to these people who are trying to deceive us with their false teachings. Now that we got the context, let's go ahead and move to our main key points. So point number one, true wisdom and knowledge can be found in Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 2 and 9 through 15. When it comes to knowledge and wisdom, we need to understand we need to not look at the outside world. In our Christian walk of life, especially in today's society, people are going to look at you like you're crazy. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, you, you, you believe in God, so that means like you don't believe in science or anything like that, right? Now I'm being a bit facetious, but that's kind of the gist of how it goes. We need to stand firm in God, knowing that God's word has been tried, it has been tested, and it comes back to be found true. If it's knowledge and wisdom we're looking for, we need to just stay firmly rooted in Jesus Christ. And that leads us on to point number two. And I'm going to read this one because I don't have it memorized. Point number two, people will try to use clever sounding arguments and reasoning based upon their own understanding, their own personal point of view, and try to convince you that you are wrong. And it is imperative that we do not separate ourselves from the Word of God when this happens. The moment we try to step off of the Word of God and defend the Word of God in our own understanding outside the Bible, that's where the mistakes start to come. Trust me, I've been in plenty of these conversations, and I have failed in some of these conversations because I was lured in by the trap of using human wisdom rather than just going back to the Bible to answer these questions. You can find references for this in Colossians chapter 2, verses 4, 8, and 16 through 23. Point number three. Oh, geez. Point number three. Don't let other people tell you that you have to mix these extra biblical or really even non-biblical traditions and legalistic things of that manner into your faith in order to achieve salvation. The Bible makes it clear. We are saved by faith alone. We can see this referenced in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, and 16 through 23. Now, just to dive a little bit deeper on that point, sometimes in modern-day Christianity, and maybe you've experienced this before too, some denominations will try to push some form of legalism on you. And they'll say, oh yes, yes, you're saved by faith alone, but if you don't do this, 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 and this, then you're actually not saved. And these things can range 
from a little weird to just absolutely crazy. I mean, I've seen it to the point where people go on, oh, you have to have a shaved beard. Women, you cannot wear any form of pants. You cannot drink any form of alcohol. You have to have your hair this way. You have to do this. You have to do that. You can't eat this. You have to worship this way. You can't worship on this day, but you can definitely worship on this day and this day alone. The list goes on and on and on. This is where people try to twist the word of God and take away from that save by faith alone message and add their traditions and laws of men into salvation, which is honestly completely wrong. And my wife's here, so Bella can, can go away. She wouldn't stop crying unless I held her on my lap. Okay, back to it. Point number four, don't let other people tell you that you are not saved. We can reference this in verse 16 through 19. And the reason why I say this is because in the church at Colossae, people were coming through and they were trying to basically say, hey, if you're not doing this, if you're not doing that, going back to our last point, then you aren't a Christian. You aren't saved. And you kind of see this today, especially what I see in what's known as the Hebrew Roots Movement, where people will tell you, oh, well, if you truly love God, then you're, you're going to follow his law. And I'm not just talking about the Ten Commandments law, the moral law. I'm talking about all the law in the Old Testament. Well, that's crazy and ridiculous, but sadly, that's what they say. And the argument kind of goes, well, if you love God, you're going to follow his law. And if you don't follow his law, then you obviously don't love God. And if you don't love God, that means you're not a Christian. And that's the arguments that they will use. And this is kind of what was going on in the church in Colossae. People were saying, oh yeah, saved by faith alone. That's cool. Well, if, if you if you truly have faith, that means you're going to do X, Y, and Z, adding in their Jewish legalism, adding in their pagan mysticism. And obviously this was a lie that Paul sought to combat. If you are a true believer, that means you're sins were paid for by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. All sins, past, present, and future. While we may continue to mess up and we may stumble, that does not mean we lose our salvation. Now, I will say, because I want to caution against this, that maybe somebody out of love does say, hey, you know what, I, I, brother, I think you may want to examine yourself because your actions are not lining up with what you say you believe. And when they come across like that and they say this and they're saying it out of love, they may be saying it for a good reason because sometimes, sadly, in today's world, I am very happy that we live in a place where we can worship God freely. But at the same time, that means a whole bunch of false teachings have swept the church. And in that, there's a lot of people walking around today calling themselves a Christian that aren't actually a Christian. Now, me, I am not God, very obviously, and I cannot determine who has salvation. But what I can do in love is let people know when they profess Christ, but yet their actions aren't lining up with what is inside the Bible, I can let them know, hey man, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. And very cheesy, but you know, the it's pretty true. But once again, back to the main point, don't let other people tell you you are not saved. Point number five, and this is our last point, be very cautious when people tell you, hey, God told me, or I had a vision of, because those people are usually speaking from their butt. And not they're really their butt, you know, I'm just kind of being sarcastic, I hope you know that. But what they are speaking from is their own flesh, their own mind, and their own understanding. They may have good intentions, and they may feel a certain way, but when God speaks, it is undoubtedly clear. We can reference this back in verse 18 and 19. Now, the Bible does say that we should not despise prophecy, but hold fast to what is true, testing it, making sure that it's true. Basically, how I do this is if somebody ever comes up to me, and yes, this has happened before, funny enough, where someone said, I feel God is telling me to tell you X, Y, and Z. Nine times out of 10, it's usually something very vague, uh, and it's something that can apply to anybody. It's never been anything absolutely specific. But an easy way to tell if this is right or wrong is to test it against the Bible. If what they're saying is extra biblical, and especially if it's anti-biblical, you'll know that this person is talking from their own flesh and their own mind and not from God. I mean, I literally heard one time in a Bible group where a woman was saying that she heard from God that she needed to buy some new clothes for herself because she deserved it. And I'm not talking about some cheap clothes. I'm talking about some expensive clothes. 
that doesn't really mesh up with the Word of God. Now, if someone was going to come up to me with something very pointed and very personal, something that I know only God knows, then yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and start paying attention a little bit because, once again, I'm not going to despise prophecy, but I'm going to hold fast to what is true and I'm going to test it against the Word of God. If it doesn't line up with the Bible, if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, they're talking out of their flesh. All right, with all that being said, this episode was meant to be short, fast, and while I really would have loved to dive more into these topics, I know not everybody has that kind of time. So if you like this format, by all means, please let us know in the comments below, drop a like, and subscribe if you do enjoy this type of content. And if you don't like this kind of content, let me know, so that way maybe we just don't do this kind of thing again. Well, anyways, I will talk with you later. This is Tim with I Believe Now What, signing out.